Hello, welcome to Free School Exam Preparation. Today we're going to talk about Edexcel International AS and A Levels Pure Mathematics 3. In this lecture, we're going to continue with Chapter 6, Numerical Methods. So in the previous lecture, we've talked about how to identify if an interval contains a solution for a function or not. In today's lecture, we are going to look at how to find out this root. So in further pure mathematics one, so we've learned about three different methods. So the first one is called interval bisection. And the second one is called linear interpolation. And the third one is called newton raphson method. So for the first two, actually we are trying to shrink the interval which contains this um, solution or this root. The third method, we are using something called iterative method. So we're trying to build up a sequence of x, let's say we have x1, x2, x3, and continue, right? And we hope this sequence will approach to the solution. And the formula to build up the sequence is xn plus 1 equals to xn minus fxn f prime xn. And today we are going to look at another type of iteration method. And this is called fixed point iteration. Okay, so what does fixed point iteration mean? So let me give you one example. So if we have this function fx equals to x squared minus x minus 1, we want to find out its root or try to solve this x squared minus x minus 1 equals to 0. What can we do? So the first step is we are trying to rearrange this function into x equals to a function gx. So for this one, so probably we can move this um, x negative x minus 1 to the right hand side so we have x squared equals to x plus 1 right so we have this x equals to square root of x plus 1 and then we call this square root of x plus 1 gx and now we try to build up this sequence of points so x0 is given x1 equals to gx0 x2 equals to gx1 so if we continue, xn plus 1 equals to gxn. And we hope this xn plus 1 will be, uh, sorry, sorry, this xn will be nearer and nearer to the solution. Okay, so if we build up this sequence from x0 equals to 0 0.5, so we have x1 equals to 1.22474, x2 equals to 1.49156, x3 equals to 1.57847, x4 equals to 1.60576, and x5 equals to 1.61424, x6 equals to 1.61686, x7 is 1.61767. You can continue. So if we only want one decimal place for this solution, we know it will be 1.6, right? So if we want two decimal places, so we know from here it will be 1.62. Okay, so that's how we use this fixed point iteration to find the solution. However, you may ask, why you choose this particular GX? Because we can also write this one as x squared minus x equals to 1, right? So we'll have this x times x minus 1 equals to 1. So we have x equals to 1 over x minus 1. And we call this one gx. Okay, so if you try to plug in the value starting from x0 equals to negative 2. So we have x1 equals to negative 0 0.3333. x2 equals to negative 0 0.75. x3 negative 0 0.5714 x4 equals to negative 0 0.6363 uh, and then we have x5 equals to negative 0 0.611 x6 negative 0 0.620687 x7 equals to negative 0 0.6170 x8 equals to negative 0 0.6184 so we notice actually it's also approaching a solution which is negative 0 0.62.
So we got another solution for this function uh, or this equation. Okay, so the way they approach the solution is different. So if we look at the first one, right? So we notice the value of x keeps increasing. So if we draw the graph, let's say if this is uh, 0 0.5, right? So if there, this is x0, then this lens here, or the y coordinate of this point will be x1, x coordinate. So this will be x1. So if we go like here, so this particular lens here will be x2's uh, value. So this will be x2. And then we go up and touch this graph here. So this y coordinate of this particular point will be x3. So if we draw all this, it looks like a staircase. And also we know the values are nearer and nearer to this solution. So we call this one successive iteration. Okay, however, for this one, the graph is different. So if we draw this function 1 over x minus 1, it will be something like this. So if we have this uh, negative 2 being here, right? Let me just change the color. So this is uh, x0, negative 2. So this value here, right, will be the value of x1. So x1 will go to here. And then we have this y coordinate of this particular point will be the value of x2. So x2 will be here. And then this one's y coordinate will be x3. So we notice actually it's jumping, right? So if you draw it um, like correctly, it will be something from x0 and then to x1. And then we come back and to x2. And then we come back and then go to x3. So we call this thing Cobb web. And this is also called successive alternate. Okay, so no matter what, both of them will approach to the solution. However, they are approaching to different solutions in different styles. Okay, now let's take a look at another possible choice of GX. Maybe I change the color here, right? So one very obvious choice is I move this X to the right-hand side. So I have X equals to X squared minus 1. So this will be our GX. Okay, now we can try to plug in some values, right? So if we let X0 to be 2, so x1 will be 3, and x2 will be 8, and x3 will be 63, and x4 will be even larger. So it seems we are not able to converge to the solution. So in this case, we say this choice of gx makes this point divergent. So this GX is not a good choice because it will not help us find the solution. Okay, so maybe we can take a look at one example. So this one is from the textbook, page 165, question 2. So we have this fx equals to x squared minus 5x minus 3. And we have two different choices of GX. So the first one is we have this x squared equals to 5x plus 3. So x will be square root of 5x plus 3. So this will be our gx. The second method to choose gx will be, uh, so this one equals to 0, right? So we have this 5x equals to x squared minus 3. So x will be x, three, my, x squared minus 3 over 5. So this one will be our choice of gx. And here we want to see that when x equals to x0 equals to 5, we will have different xn's. Okay, so maybe we can try this calculation. Okay, so for the first one, if gx equals to square root of 5x plus 3, x0 is 5. 
So x1 will be square root of 25 plus 3, 28. So this will be 5.2915. And x2 will be square root of 5x1 plus 3. So it will be 5.427. Um, so if we want four decimal places, so x3 will be 5.4898. And x4 will be 5.5180. x5 will be 5.5308. x6 will be 5.5366. x7 will be 5.5392. So depending on how many decimal places you want. So if you want two decimal places, so we know this one will approach to this solution. Alpha equals to 5.53, uh, 54, right? Because both of these go to 5.54. Okay, so if you say I will only want one decimal place, so here is enough. So from x3 and x4, we know it's approaching to 5.5 because both of them will round up to 5.5. Okay, so if we use this GX here, so we have x0 equals to 5. And x1 equals to 5 squared minus 3 over 5, 4.4. x2 equals to 3.272. x3 um, equals to 1.5412. x4 will be negative 0.125. And x5 will be negative 0.5969. Uh, x6 will be negative 0.5287. X7 will be negative 0.544. X8 will be negative um, 0.5408. And this one is 5441. Okay, and then depending on how many decimal places you want. So if you say, okay, we want two decimal places, because both of these round to negative 0.54. And if you say we only want one decimal place, so from this one, we know it will be negative 0.5. Right. Okay, so that's how we um, do this question. So we notice different choices of GX will have different solutions. Maybe we can try another example. So this is uh, from page 166. Let's double check. Yes. So page 166, question 5. So we have this function, oops, fx equals to x cubed plus 5x squared minus 2. And still, we have different choices of gx, right? So when fx equals to 0. So the first choice is we'll have x cubed equals to 2 minus 5x squared. So x will be cubic root of 2 minus 5x squared. So this will be our gx. And another choice is we will have this x times x squared plus 5 equals to 2. So x will be 2 over x squared plus 5, uh, 5x. Okay, we can have another choice, right? So this will be x equals to, um, so let's do this way, 5x squared equals to 2 minus x cubed. So x squared will be 2 minus x cubed over 5. So x will be square root of 2 minus x cubed over 5. And also we can have another choice. So which is x, um, let's, say, let's see how we can do this. So we'll have x cubed equals to 2 minus 5x, right? And then we divide x squared on both sides. So we have x equals to 2 over x squared and minus 5 over x. Oh, so here's 5x squared, so just minus 5. Okay, so we have how many choices? 1, 2, 3, 4. So in the question, this is the first choice. And this is the second choice. And this is the third choice. And then starts from x0 equals to 10. 
And then we're trying to find root by using the second choice here. So we have gx equals to 2 over x squared minus 5. So what you can do is you can just build up the sequence x1, right, x2. So here we want three decimal places. So let's try to do this one. So x1 will be um, negative 4.9800. And this one will be negative 4.9194. And x3 will be negative 4.91736. x4 will be negative 4.91729. Okay, so just by looking at these two, so we know they will both round to negative 4.917, right? So in this case, up to three decimal places, so we have this is our solution. Okay, so now let's take a look at question B. So here we want to start from x0 equals to 1 and then use the gx, this one, to build up the sequence. So gx equals to square root of 2 minus x cubed over 5. And then we want to find out three decimal places as well. Okay, so now we can try to find out the value. So x1 will be 0 0.4472. So x2 will be 0 0.6182. x3 will be 0 0.5939. x4 will be 0 0.5984. x5 will be 0 0.5976. Um, so if we want three decimal places, still not enough. X6 will be 0 0.59776. Okay, so now it's enough, right? This is 78. Because both of these will round to 0 0.598 if we want to keep three decimal places. So we found the solution as well. Okay, question three is why we can't use this GX to start from x0 equals to 2. Okay, so if we have x0 equals to 2, what will be our x1? So x1 will be square root of 2 minus 8 over 5. This thing is less than 0. So that's why we can't use this one to build up the sequence. So there is only one challenge question for this chapter. So probably we can just take a, uh, take a look at it right now. So this is on page 169. So we have this function fx with the graph given. And first we want to show the second derivative equals to 0 can be written as this one. Okay, so we can calculate the first derivative of f. So this will be 6x5 plus 3x squared minus 14x and minus 1. And the second derivative will be 30x4 plus 6x and minus 14. So if it's 0, so we'll have, um, we can divide 2 on both sides. 15x4 plus 3x minus 7 equals to 0. So for the first one, we'll have this 3x equals to 7 minus 15x4. So x will be 7 minus 15x4 over 3. So that's for a, uh, so a1. For a2 here, we'll have this um, 3x. Okay, so what we can do here is, okay, so we have this 15x4 plus 3x equals to 7. So we take out this x. So x times 15x cubed plus 3 equals to 7. So we have x equals to 7 over 15x cubed plus 3. Okay, and for the third one, so we can have this 15x4 equals to 7 minus 3x, right? So from this one, so x4 will be 7 minus 3x over 15. And we have x equals to the fourth root of 7 minus 3x, 15. Okay, now let's take a look at question B. So we want to find out an approximation to this point B. 
Okay, so why are we looking at the second derivative of f? So think about at this point b here. So this line is quite straight. So that means the first derivative at around this b will be a constant number. So if the first derivative at this point b is a constant number, so the second derivative at this point b will be 0. So that means at this point b, we have the second derivative equals to 0. So you can think about our function is this f double prime x instead of this original function fx. And now we can use this uh, like three of them to approximate to b. But which one to choose? So let's just take a look at the first one. So if we plug in the value of uh, x equals to 0, right? So we will have x1 equals to, let's just do here x1 equals to 7 over 3. And then we can have our x2. So what will be x2? It will be um, negative 145.8765. It looks very different from the previous two values. And now if we try x3, so it will be negative 22641847 Okay, I think we don't need to try any more because obviously this is divergent. So we will not be able to find out a solution for f double prime x equals to 0 from this one here. Okay, so how about 2? So here we can have uh, starting from x0 equals to 0. So x1 will be 7 over 3. So let's calculate x2. So x2 will be 0 0.03617 and x3 will be so this one is 2.333 right x3 will be 2.3328 x4 equals to 0 0.03619 x5 equals to 2.3328 x6 equals to 0 0.03619 x7 equals to 2.3328. So we notice actually this x I like keep jumping. So one is around this um, 2.3328 and another is jumping to this 0 0.333. So we will not be able to find the solution because if you think about one point is here, 0 0.36, um, let's say 33, and this one is 2.33, right? So maybe we'll have x0 here, x1 here, and then we have x2, some other oh, x, this is 2 point. So x1 here, x2 here, x3 here, x4 here. So we don't know like which point is approaching. So this is also not a good choice. And for the third one, so if we plug in the value x0 equals to 0, x1 will be 0 0.8265. So x2 will be 0 0.7409. And x3 is 0 0.7512. x4 is 0 0.7500. x5 is 0 0.7501. So if you want three decimal places, we've already got the answer, right? So that will be 0 0.751. So the third uh, function here, gx, is the best choice for question B. Okay, question C. Why can't we use the same formula to find A? Why is that? Okay, so think about the x coordinate of A. So it is negative. However, this x is the fourth root here. So no matter what, it will be a non negative number. So that's why we can't use the third formula to approach to this solution at point A. Okay, so now let's take a look at the syllabus. So we've talked about 6.1 in the previous lecture, and today we've talked about 6.2. And also we've talked about the challenge question for this chapter. So that's everything for Pure Mathematics 3. So starting from next lecture, we are going to discuss the past papers of Pure Mathematics 3. So we hope you have enjoyed our lectures and wish you good luck with your exam. If you are interested, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, Free School Exam Preparation. Thank you.